Namaste to all. Welcome to the ninth uh, session of uh, Gurukula. A hearty welcome to all of you on behalf of uh, Easy Ayurveda. We have the guest speaker of today, Vaidya Kashinath uh, Samagandi, sir. So may I have the privilege of uh, introducing our uh, guest speaker, who is also a, a privileged personality in the field of Ayurveda, Swastarutta and Yoga. Vaidya Kashinath Samagandi, sir, is a PhD in Swastarutta and uh, Yoga, works as Associate Professor in Department of uh, PG Studies in Swastarutta and Yoga in National Institute of uh, Ayurveda, Jaipur, and uh, he has specialized in many areas. So like uh, Ayurveda, dietetics and modulations, Ayurveda lifestyle, yoga in personality development and uh, therapeutic yoga and many others. Having a big grand experience in teaching and also clinical research for more than 14 years, Sarah has guided many students in uh, post-graduation and also PhD levels. So there's uh, man many international uh, visits and participation uh, also uh, against his name, nominated by Ayush Ministry. That's a big privilege as yoga expert and team coordinator and also speaker uh, visiting many countries like uh, Geneva, uh, Beijing, Switzerland, Vietnam, apart from doing extensive activities in India. So, sir has published, uh, sir has four, published uh, four, four, four books and many articles and papers in 35 international and national uh, peer journals and also health magazines and a lot of work in uh, literature also. Sir has given many guest lectures and uh, TV and radio shows. Multidimensional personality, Kashinath sir, is uh, headed many projects also and has many awards uh, to his name. So with this brief introduction, Kashinath sir will be uh, presenting his topic uh, which is related to the theme of today. So that is International Day of Yoga. All of us, uh, many of us are inclined towards yoga. We know yoga not only as a popular system, but also a popular practice among people. Many people are uh, inclined towards practice. Many have gurus, many don't have gurus. They just follow the articles and also the videos and practice yoga. So such is popularity of the yoga. So today we shall hear from our expert, sir, uh, uh, Dr. Vaidyanath, uh, uh, Dr. Vaidya, Ashnath Samagandi, sir. So about vital etiquettes during self-yoga practice. So this is the topic uh, sir will be speaking. Kashinath sir, uh, over to you. Thank you, uh, Raghuram sir. Shubham karoti kalyanam arogyam danasam padam shatru buddhi vinashaya Deepajyoti namastute, Deepajyoti parabrahma, Deepajyoti janardana, Deepoharatu me papam, Deepajyoti namastute. Namaste to one and all. And uh, the topic uh, which I am going to discuss today is vital etiquettes in self yoga practice so purpose of uh, discussing these especially this point is that because nowadays people as raghuram but sir told that many people started practicing yoga when the yoga is announced as the international day so because of this publicity people are started practicing but whether the people who are practicing whether they are taking the directions or guidance from the experts this is the question of uh, thinking because many people just by seeing the uh, videos or by just uh, reading the uh, books they start doing the yoga but we don't know exactly if any yoga which is practiced without any guidelines how how exactly it is going to affect your body adversely because when you see any any article related to the yoga, most of the time we will get the articles which shows that yoga has one or other benefits. Very rarest to rare, we get certain articles which shows that yoga, if it is practiced improper way, even it may give rise to the very complicated complications. So that is the reason. So whenever we want to practice any kind of yoga, so ultimately even we need to understand what are the fundamentals, how we need to incorporate when we are practicing by your own. So that is the main intention why it uh, chosen this topic to discuss with you. So coming to the introduction, as we all know that the present era, it is called as a, te a technological era. So day by day, the technology is uh, escalating like anything and day by day it is attaining new heights. And if we say that all the digital media, what we are able to see now, it may be the Facebook or it may be WhatsApp, Twitter, Reels, sh uh, Shorts, all, all the Instagram, everything or all the outcome of the technology. Because through this technology, even various knowledge is also catered. So it may be the knowledge related to the 
एस्ट्रोलॉजी एस्ट्रोनोमी फाइनेंस आर इवन हेल्थ आर इवन इट मे बी वेल बींग सो सच इन नॉ वेस्ट नॉलेज इज केटर्ड थ्रू दीज डिजिटल मीडिया बट वेन वी सी दी percentage of acceptance which kind of knowledge is accepted by which kind of people again it says that more than 60 to 70% of knowledge which are related to the health and well being they are well accepted by the public so it indicates that people are very much eager towards to preserve their health they promote their health and even if they are the victim of any kind of ailments even they want to rectify that ailments by following particular healthy ways or healthy living so that is the reason so here because of this technology because this uh, of this uh, digital media knowledge is scattered but here acceptance obviously as i stated knowledge which is related to the health and well being are more accepted but whenever they are accepting again whether the public is going to analyze that what the knowledge they are getting through the social media or digital media whether they are genuine or not because many people in my opd many people will they come and they will say that sir i i got one message related to particular uh, lifestyle modality whether is it true or not whether i need to practice it uh, practice it or not and some people they say sir we uh, got some like uh, um, uh, clip related to the yoga and we started practicing that so in such a way they are practicing but they are not able to analyze which kind of lifestyle modality which kind of yoga asana or any any procedure related to the yoga whether it is going to affect them directly or indirectly they are not at all analyzing just by just seeing the number of trolls by seeing the number of likes by by seeing the number of shares just they are accepting and they are incorporating those things in their day to day life but exactly we how exactly the coin has two sides in the same way if yoga if it is not appropriately practiced then even it may give rise to the lots of complications so most of the time we see the bright side of the yoga because nowadays lots of yoga studios are mushrooming like anything in in every area you will get the one or other yoga studios but there we will come to know that one so you by practicing the yoga yoga is going to give the lots of adverse effect in such a way all these tantrums are done but there is no any institute or there is no any studio yoga studio which says that okay one of the uh, complications occurred in our institute or in our studio while doing particular uh, asanas they never they never expose or they never uh, like uh, mention these things because if they mention obviously they can't run their business that is the reason most of the time when we see the uh, yoga how exactly it is catered on the basis of benefits on the basis of uh, benefits what the public are getting in such a way they are catered but very rarely or very few people they are focusing and they are highlighting the complications or what's all happening when yoga is practiced uh, improperly so ultimately even we need to focus on dark side of improper practice of yoga in general yoga has ultimate benefit to our mind and body but if it is practiced improper way again it may give rise to the lots of complications and one complication let me uh, like uh, complications what uh, we are going to see that is not exactly by the yoga but it is mainly because of the it may be the flaw of the uh, instructor or it may be the flaw of the patient or a health seeker who is supposed who is going to practice the yoga because we know that being a instructors there are many instructors some some instructor might be not having the knowledge uh, regarding the anatomy regarding the physiology of the body even pathophysiology physiology of the particular disease without having the knowledge about the anatomy physiology and pathophysiology of particular diseases if you advise some complication may happen so, uh, for example one one condition even you can google it in pubmed there is a one article saying that if you practice kapalabhati without assessing your body even it may give rise to the complications like pneumothorax it indicates that kapalabhati if it is not practiced appropriately according to the directions again it may give rise to the complications if the person doing uh, what we are jalaneti so if he as doesn't assess his body and just if he is uh, practicing jalaneti sometimes even it may give rise to the condition if he is having any prevailing diseases like glaucoma so if glaucoma patient if he does jalaneti again there will be a worsening of the condition if the person is suffering with the complaints like epistaxis what we call bleeding from the nose if that person practices excessively kapalabhati bastrika or even right nostril breathing what we are going to say as सूर्य अनुलोम विलोम सूर्य वेदना अगेन दि कंडीशन में वर्सन 
so that is the reason here instructor is supposed to take a very detailed history of each and every person who is visiting his clinic or a uh, institute without assessing or without taking the history if the person start advising again there might be a chance of complication that is mainly because of the, because of the flaw of the instructors and even you know that because even when we go into any studio we will see various uh, uh, pictures which will be depicting like the person is doing the inverted series like shirsasana or advanced series but they are not preferably advised for each and every individual those are displayed to attract the health seeker but if any health seeker expecting those pictures and he is also expecting to do that one if his body is not suitable to perform particular inverted series again there might be chance of complications so that is the reason instructor duty is to assess the anatomy appropriately physiology and pathophysiology of the particular condition then he need to advise otherwise he will end up person may end up patient may end, end up in the complication and another flaw what we are going to see is the flaw from the patient side or flaw from flaw from the practitioner because once he will visit the any studio and he will learn but after going that again gradually when he start uh, practicing one or other new thing he will start uh, incorporating in his routine uh, routine practices that new thing whatever the patient is incorporating whatever the health seeker is incorporating in regular practice if it is not suitable to his body again it is going to affect the patient so it may be the patient flaw and very importantly there are lots of lots of ailments uh, which will be prevailing in the childhood and later by uh, rectifying their lifestyle some diseases might be subsided so at that time patient may forget to recall those things and uh, explain these uh, 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 childhood problems to the uh, doctor at that time again if you fail to ask all the detailed previous history again if the person is suffering with any prevailing diseases long back like for example uh, what we call epilepsy most of the time in uh, villages villages in india preferably most of the people will try to hide this uh, uh, complaint of epilepsy because there is a thinking that if people will come to know that one person is suffering with the epilepsy like conditions even they may not get appropriate bride or a groom so it uh, such a myths are there in uh, village population so many people will try to hide such complaint and if the person is having the any complaint of previous history of bleeding from the nose even sometimes patient may forget to uh, recall at the time of uh, interaction with the doctor at that time again if the person is having such kind of prevailing diseases and if he uh, pra practice certain asanas or part uh, particular shatkriyas those prevailing conditions which were long back in their body may again come out and they may give rise right to the uh, give rise to the complications so that is the reason the duty of a instructor or a duty of the uh, expert is to assess each and every part even he need to take the history uh, of the prevailing diseases and even if he is having the any diseases uh, previously even he need to take the detailed history otherwise again there might be a chance of consequences and which may give the bad name to the yoga so that is the reason consequences why it's happening because of instructor flaw or it may be because of practitioner's flaw or it may be because of the patient flaw because patient is also whenever he visit any doctor he need to reveal each and everything what what is what is his health status he should reveal he is not supposed to hide the things if he hide then obviously he will end up with the complication so before we understand what exactly the uh, basic etiquettes we need to practice whenever we are uh, practicing any kind of yoga just we need to understand even what exactly yoga literature say because there are numerous textbooks related to the yoga you all know that it may be the patanjali yoga sutra or it may be uh, it may be the hatha yoga or it may be uh, gherinda samhita or it may be shiva samhita there are various texts of yoga again the concept which are explained in the yoga shastra are not uh, available at the uh, available in single literature they are totally dispersed because if you want to practice the shatkriya then you need to refer the hatha yoga or gerenda sahita if you want to understand the dharana dhyana samadhi then you need to focus on the raja yoga so in such a way knowledge is totally dispersed so being a doctor or being the instructor even we need to have a very detailed knowledge of each and every text then only you will be you will be able to advise the yoga appropriately and again whenever you see the uh, like uh, uh, verses in the uh, sanskrit in, in the 
आयुर्वेदा सॉरी इन योग लिटरेचर इट मे बी पतंजलि और इट मे बी हटाई होगा मोस्ट ऑफ दी कॉन्सेप्ट वेन वेन यू रीड दी सूत्र यू फील दैट दे आर नॉट एट ऑल रिवील्ड कंप्लीटली समटाइम्स वी फील दैट दे ऑल दी नॉलेज इज कंसिल्ड एंड इवन हटा योग शास्त्र ऑल्सो इन मेनी वर्स इट सेज दैट लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल हटा योगम गौप्यम that is he they uh, uh, hatha yoga uh, sh- uh, says that all the hatha yoga shastra gnana is not supposed to be revealed to each and every person so many things whenever he uh, while explaining the shat kriyas again he says that shat kriyam gaupyam we need to keep the secrecy in explaining the shat kriya so again why they mentioned this gaupya why they mentioned to maintain the secrecy again indirectly they want to say that if the person is willing to practice and the, if the person is eligible to practice then only you are supposed to advise otherwise you are not supposed to force any person to practice particular asanas or particular yogic kriyas so that is the reason in many verses in many sutras they had mentioned the terms like gaupyam we need to conceal it and again whenever it comes to the practicing the yoga again most of the time we ignore lots of lots of basic points because for example whenever you are practicing yoga even we need to prepare our body before you practice the yoga but we don't prepare our body that is we won't prepare our mind we won't prepare our body without preparing your mind and body if you end up into the uh, advising the any yoga again that unprepared mind and body may end up into the complications so i mean lot of things are even available in the uh, like scientific literature as i stated if you want to advise any yogic procedure to any complaints first we need to see is there any reference in the classic classics in the sense if there is any if there uh, is there any reference in the yoga literature if you could not find any literature base then next point is you need to assess any published research articles scientific research articles if you are not able to get that one then next will be why logically you need to think and you need to advise the yoga if you don't do these three things then sure there might be chance of complication so first you need to see the shastra you need to learn the literature uh, correctly and otherwise you need to go for the scientific uh, uh, research data which are available or else at least logically you need to uh, advise the appropriate uh, appropriate yoga and another is that yoga we all know that yoga is more practical and less theoretical so being a practical many things will be uh, a practitioner will come to know when he will go on practicing without any practicing if you are advising then you are not a appropriate yoga teacher you need to practice because when when you start practicing regularly yoga itself will start teaching you many things many things so that is the reason you need to approach being a patient or being a uh, health seeker if you want to take any directions related to the yoga you need to approach those practitioner who literally practice by his own and who is having the knowledge about anatomy physiology pathophysiology of each and every condition he will be the appropriate person to advise the appropriate yoga otherwise you will end up in the lots of side effects or complications so that is the reason you need to practice until and unless you don't practice then you can't reveal yourself you can't reveal the exact benefits of yoga on your mind and body so in ayurveda again there is a beautiful work saying that sukartam saro bhutanam matah saro pravrtaya sukam dharma atta vinachya pavati tato dharmo paro bhavet what exactly they want to say is that whatever the activity is done by every individual is to attain the happiness and it is not mandatory that every activity is done by every individual is going to give the uh, uh, fruitful result those activities which are according to the dharma para what is dharma here it's not related to the any religion dharma here indicates that fundamentals any activities which is done according to the fundamentals that kind of activity is going to give the fruitful result and even that is going to give the happiness so whenever you are going to practice any kind of yoga whether it is a shat kriya or whether it is a asana whether it is a pranayama or whether it is a meditation any kind of asanas or any kind of yogic things if you want to uh, practice first and foremost those practices should be according to the doctrines of the yoga or according to the fundamentals of the yoga so you need to abide to the principles if the principle says that you need to practice in such a way then you need to practice because you know that in uh, day to day practices what happening is that whenever uh, like uh, people uh, will come in, in, in my opd that they says that if if i interact with them how exactly you practicing yoga many people many people they says sir as soon as i get up from the uh, bed then i will just uh, attend the nature calls after attending the nature calls then i will start practicing pranayama 
after pranayama and i will go for practicing meditation and if there is a time then i will practice asanas so in such a way they are people are answering that is there is no any systematic approach so ayurveda uh, yoga shastra always says that whenever if you want to practice yoga asana always always we need to practice from the hygiene that is shauch kriya we need to attend the nature call then you need to practice the asana first you need to uh, activate your body so after activating body then you need to activate your breath after activating the breath then you need to practice the pranayama after practicing the pranayama you need to proceed to the practicing of dharana dhyana samadhi so this is the very sequential way how exactly yoga shastra says to practice but people they don't know what to start when so uh, uh, abruptly if they start any procedure again it may give rise to the any uh, any kind of complications so always you need to stick on to the fundamentals you need to stick on to the doctrines of the yoga accordingly if you practice then sure you are going to get the good benefits again very importantly very another very important point what exactly i want to mention is that ayurveda and yoga these two shastras will go in parallel because there are lots of concepts which are explained in the yoga shastra they are very minimum minimum in the sense minimum like uh, not uh, not related to the any asana procedures are not related to the pranayama concepts like yoga shastra speaks about the uh, pancha mahabhuta theory that is five basic element theory uh, yoga shastra speak but it is not uh, elaborately mentioned even they yoga shastra also speak about the tridoshas bodily humors vata pitta kapha even they speaks about the sapta dhatus seven bodily tissues like rasa rakta mamsa meda so in such a way each and every concept they elaborated in, uh, they mentioned in the yoga shastra but very extensive manner how exactly what is the body how exactly body functions what are the importance of tridoshas what are the importance of understanding of pancha mahabhuta and sapta dhatus those are very extensively elaborated in the ayurveda shastra so what exactly here i want to say is that if you find any yoga practitioner and if he is having any yoga uh, ayurveda background then he will be the appropriate person to guide you appropriately because yoga shastra very minimum way they are explaining about these basic concept it may be panchamahabhuta it may be tridosha it may be sapta dhatu but very extensive way it is explained in the ayurveda so ayurveda shastra if, if the specialist of ayurveda if he is into the yoga and if he is practicing yoga then he will be the appro appropriate person to uh, guide each and every uh, health uh, uh, seeker so here again we all know that when we see the uh, yoga uh, sutras of uh, patanjali that that is yogena chittasya padena vacha malam sharirasya tu vaidyakena so this verse literally says that yogena chittasya yoga is preferably meant for the psychological disorders or preferably meant for the maintaining the mental status that is yogena chitta chitta is nothing but the mind mind mana so again even in ayurveda shastra also we have same uh, version that is uh, like uh, patanjali mahavasya charaka prati samskrutam manovak kai doshanam harte haipate namaha even first verse of charaka samhita tika first quotations tika also they says that patanjali mahavasya patanjali is patanjali yoga shastra is preferably meant for the managing the psychological disorder so when we see both the verse verse of the ayurveda and verse of the uh, yoga shastra both they says that they are meant for mind but nowadays many people are utilizing the yoga for the all round personality development is it true or is it is it right way what they are doing yes is it is it, it's a right way even though they mentioned that yoga na chitta sa yoga is meant for managing the psychological disorders even in in the in the journey of controlling your mind even you need to control your breath in the journey of controlling your breath even you need to control your body that is the reason when you control your body ultimately your physical status or your physical personality will go on uh, uh, glooming in the same way when your uh, when your uh, physical body is gloom then gradually even you can move towards the uh, like uh, grow, uh, like controlling your emotional or even a psychological aspect of your body that is the reason yoga is just not related to the psychological psychology uh, controlling the psychological factor even yoga is considered as the all round personality development it will develop your physical mental social spiritual emotional and vocational uh, aspect of your health so it is a absolute absolute package for your personality development but as i stated earlier 
nowadays there are different types of yoga which are available in the market you know that especially yoga in the sense in different uh, schools of yogas are also there and even weird methods of yoga practices are also there like for example what we say here you can see that fear yoga again this is nude yoga these are the very, very uh, heinous uh, methods of yoga practices which are totally deviating from the fundamentals such kind of yogas are even erupting like anything in the market so each and every person they are not supposed to give their head towards such kind of weird practices of yoga rather than there are lots of modified modified yoga practitioners are there which are well accepted and which are there uh, abide to the fundamentals especially it may be the art of living or it may be the ashtanga yoga vinyasa or it may be the prop yoga so these uh, different schools of yoga they still they have the connection or they just hold the fundamentals with the fundamentals they are practicing these are good to accept but these previously stated like these beer yoga nude yoga these are totally they are supposed to be condemned because they are totally deviated from the fundamentals so again as i stated because of like erupting of yoga schools nowadays nowadays yoga has become it's a workout if you ask any people most of the time they don't say that one uh, i am going for practicing the yoga most of the time i am going for yoga workout so yoga is not the workout but it is the work in we need to work on in yourself that is you need to work on your mind yoga is work in yoga is not about the racing now it has become the competition isn't there many people they will they, they compete and they will say if you are able to do the 100 set of surya namaskar i will do more than 100 set of uh, surya namaskar in such a way it has become the competition it is not about the racing but it is the facing ourselves facing our emotions this is the yoga and yoga is not about the bending of your body because here you, you are seeing in this picture even when you, you visit any yoga studio many pictures will be depicted where the person will be doing the very advanced series he will be able to bending all uh, all his body and he will, he will be showing the some pose yoga is not exactly bending of the body it is the bonding of your mind and body such kind of guidance we need to advise yoga is not about the quantity but it is the quality how you are going to do so if you and yoga is not about the preaching many people are there who give good lecture on the uh, yoga but when you ask whether they are practicing many people they say they won't practice by seeing their structure you can assess that they can't practice the yoga so yoga is not about the preaching it is about the practicing so in such a way if yoga is advised to each and every person then sure we are going to get the lots of benefits so this is the very brief introduction coming to how exactly by abiding to the fundamentals how we can incorporate the uh, yoga in day to day practice first as i stated always we need if you are a instructor or if you are a practitioner if you are a practitioner first and foremost thing you need to assess your own body and mind before you are starting any kind of yoga shastra because in ancient times like there are numerous ancient schools of yoga for example as i stated earlier raja yoga hatha yoga laya yoga mantra yoga kundalini yoga so these are the various ancient schools of yoga what is the what was the purpose of dividing the yoga into the various schools if there was only one yoga raja yoga that was that was well accepted but what was the purpose behind the classifying the yoga into different uh, schools because he, if suppose if the person's physical body is not fit to do all the asanas then uh, that particular person whether he is eligible to do uh, yoga or not he will be eligible to the, do the yoga but not exactly asana then he can opt for some other schools of yoga like he can practice the mantra yoga or he can practice the some laya yoga so hatha yoga will be practiced by those person who who is physically fit if the person is not physically fit, he is uh, suffering from any skeletal disorders like kyphosis, uh, lardosis, or even uh, like uh, scoliosis, like complaint, he can't even bend forward or backward. For them, you can advise some other schools of yoga, like they can practice the just Raja Yoga, like pra practicing the Pranayama, or he can, he can practice the Mantra Yoga. So in such a way, on the basis of the requirement, these schools of yoga are supposed to be applied. So that is the reason whenever you are practicing, we need to assess our own mind and body suppose if your mind is not controlled that is if it is fluctuating excessively then again if your mind is fluctuating excessively even you can't focus or you even you can't practice any kind of 
yogic asanas at that time we need to advise the mantra yoga so if you go for mantra yoga then even you can control your mind as early as possible later you can advise the person to practice the asanas so on the basis of uh, requirement you need to advise if the person is obese and very hefty then for them you need to advise the hatha yoga because in hatha yoga it has been stated that shat karma nirgama staulya kapha dosha maladikaha if there is a excessive accumulation of kapha dosha if there is a excessive deposition of adipose tissue in your body then first we need to take out the adipose tissue which is accumulated excessively that is possible when the person practices the shat kriyas so for them hatha yoga is preferably advised in such a way on the basis of your mind and body you need to select which kind of schools of yoga you are supposed to practice another very importantly even if we need to give more focus towards the contraindications because indications it's a, in general way it has been it has been stated that samatvam yoga muchyate yoga will ba- come uh, b- bring back the equilibrium in your body it balance your mind and body that is there but if you don't know the contraindication then that will again affect your body adversely suppose if you if any patient if he is suffering from the diseases like hypertension if that person practice excessively kapalabhati or right nostril breathing if the person practice forward bending asanas like padastasana paschimottasana then same hypertension condition will get worsen because forward bending asanas or any kind of pranayama which increases the intra abdominal pressure which increases the intra thoracic pressure such kind of pranayama again worsen the conditions like hypertension so for them obviously kapalabhati is totally contraindicated so in such a way first we need to ask about the contraindications whenever the health seeker comes or if you are practicing yoga by your own if you are the victim of any condition first you need to see whether you are eligible to practice particular asanas or not you need to assess in general what i want to say is that for example diseases like hypertension hernia or hypergastritis recent abdominal surgery disc bulge disc prolapse or even uh, complaints like hypertension glaucoma uh, like even like uh, migraine headache or even conditions like epilepsy epistaxis so these are the pressure induced uh, complaints if the person are suffering with or if the person are victim of these condition they are not supposed to practice any kind of asanas which put the pressure on the abdomen like forward bending of asanas are totally contraindicated for these kind of people and pranayamas which increases the intra thoracic pressure like kapalabhati bastrikar totally contraindicated for these kind of uh, patient if the person is victim of depression he, he is not eligible to practice the meditation nowadays meditation is advised to each and every person if the medita- if the depressive patient excessively practice the meditation again the condition will get worse so for them for depressive cation patient meditation is totally prohibited rather than you need to advise some other like provoking kind of activities like uh, kapalabhati bastrika they are very good in condition like depression if the person is more anxious if the person is the victim of anxiety like condition for them depression is ulti- uh, sorry for them pranayama or meditation is ultimate for anxious person meditation is ba- best for uh, uh, depressive p- person meditation is totally prohibited in such a way indications or contraindications are very very importantly you need to assess and you need to practice the yoga again coming to the basic rules and regulations so here again uh, whenever we think about the rules first and foremost thing uh, what uh, strikes your mind is what is the appropriate time to practice the yoga whether we need to practice in morning or evening whether it should be practiced in the empty stomach or whether it should be done uh, in the by drinking the water so these are queries usually uh, people will be having but appropriate time again it depends upon the practitioner suppose if you are a new practitioner then you always opt to practice in the evening if you are already a practitioner then preferably you need to practice uh, you need to uh, start practicing in the early morning because you know that uh, in classics it has been stated that there are four times to practice the pranayama prataha madhyana sayam ardha ratre kumbakan shanair shiti paryantam chaturvaram samachare that is four times person can practice the pranayama that is prata morning afternoon evening and even in midnight also you can practice the pranayama one sutra there is very importantly what they says that like 
वंस लाइक आसने दृढ़े योगी हितम हितम अशनम गुरुपदिष्ट मार्गेण प्राणायाम समाचरित हियर व्हाट दे वांट टू से इज दैट वंस इफ यू मास्टर द आसना आसने दृढ़े योगी वंस इफ यू मास्टर द आसना लेटर इन द प्रेजेंस ऑफ गुरु इन द प्रेजेंस ऑफ प्रीचर यू नीड टू प्रैक्टिस प्राणायाम आसने दृढ़े योगी वशि हितम हितम अशनम गुरुपदिष्ट मार्गेण प्राणायाम समाचरित हियर व्हाट दे वांट टू से इज दैट pranayama is supposed to be practiced always always after practicing the uh, asanas that is y- yoga asanas y- yoga postures so here it indicates that so even you can practice pranayama and asanas four times a day that is uh, morning afternoon evening and even even in the midnight again it depends upon whether you are a new practitioner or whether you are a uh, like age old practitioner if you are new practitioner preferably opt to practice in the evening why because in throughout the day one or other activities we will be doing so when you are doing one or other activities your body will be having lots of flexibility so if you start practicing yoga in the evening time that flexibility also give the sense of positivity in you and you will it will may helps to maintain the consistency in the practicing that is the reason for newly practitioner you need to always advise that you need to practice in the evening if you are already a practitioner on time doesn't matter whenever you want you can practice again when it comes to the practicing again time even season so season is also very important in the yoga shastra it has been stated that if the person is the new practitioner he need to practice start practicing the yoga in the in uh, vasant ritu so they says that in shishira ritu and vasant ritu in cold season that is in this uh, uh, in in, uh, in the months like uh, december january february march so these are the four months which are suitable to practice start the practicing of yoga so again what is the purpose of advising uh, to practice uh, to begin the practice of yoga in this particular season according to the ayurveda shastra shishira ritu or shita ritu hemanta and shishira ritu are considered as the seasons which will having uh, which will be having the uh, good strength in the body that is in this season people will be having the good strength so that is the reason he, the person can utilize that strength in even performing the any kind of asanas that is the reason yoga shastra and ayurveda shastra astra says that person having the good strength in the uh, this season he need to practice the vyayama or he need to practice the asana so on the basis of seasons even he can opt the appropriate time to practice again coming to the place which place is suitable again here we know that there are numerous pl- places nowadays people are even practicing the yoga even in submarine in indian army uh, they are practicing the yoga and even in uh, polar region and even in high altitude also yoga is practiced so there is no any limitation or uh, binding for the any place you can practice wherever you need but preferably you need to see that all the ambience should be comfortable there should not be any noise pollution there should not be any uh, vo- uh, like even air pollution so if you divide of the if particular play place is divide of these uh, which way uh, the, these uh, pollutions then that particular place is suitable there is no like you need to select the room which which is totally clean and tidy and they should be have uh, proper ventilation that is there but if you don't have even you can practice in the outside if there is a fresh air so place is there is no any limitation for the place and again very importantly pre activities are very very important whenever you are practicing the yoga like that is especially pre activity in the sense we need to prepare our body before you are going to practice like how you need to prepare ayurveda and ayurveda shastra says that if the person is not having good sleep at the night so if the person doesn't get the proper sleep at the night nidra nasham shiro gauravam it will leads to the heaviness of the body jadyata it will leads to this uh, lethargic like condition in the body and even it may give you rise to the body ache so if the person is having nidra nasha so all these complaints will be there in the body so that person is not supposed to practice the yoga so first whenever you are practicing the yoga first you need to see that last night how your sleep was if it was appropriate if you have if you got a sound sleep then you are eligible to practice the yoga or else you are not suitable because because of loss of sleep or disturbed sleep even it will uh, disturb your routine practices so if you don't get proper sleep then don't practice that day next day or even in the evening after taking a good nap power nap in the afternoon you can practice in the evening so first we need to see the sleep 
how a uh, night sleep how exactly it was how qualitatively it was the next after that if you had a good sleep the next is that you need to clear your bowel it is a mandatory that you need to clear your bowel after clearing your bowel you need to practice withholding the bowel if you practice the yoga obviously you know that it will increase the abdominal pressure which indirectly puts the uh, pre, uh, increases the thoracic and intracranial pressure some complication may happen so it is a mandatory that you need to clear your bowel next you need to drink the near about 300 to 400 ml of water preferably it depend the uh, quality of the water depends at what time you are getting up because ayurveda shastra has the concept of usha pana usha pana is nothing but drinking the water in brahma muhurta that is sabitu samudaye kale pibet ashta prasurta jala ayurveda says that if the person get up in in the brahma muhurta brahma muhurta is nothing but 96 minutes before the sunrise if person get up in this particular time then he he can take the normal water neutral water if person get, get up beyond the brahma muhurta that is if you if the uh, person get up in the at the time of 7 am or 8 am those person are supposed to drink the lukewarm water so what is the purpose of taking the water before practicing the yoga if you take the lukewarm water it will helps to take uh, uh, like uh, it will uh, gives the uh, like it, it it will helps to clear your bowel and even it will that warmness of the warm water warm water will helps to improve the uh, like peripheral circulation if peripheral circulation is increased ultimately even the flexibility will be more so that is the reason to clear your bowel clear uh, appro appropriately you need to drink the water before you practice the yoga and even water not only helps to clear the bowel even it will give the uh, improve the circulation and even it will uh, improves the flexibility so after drinking the water next is that you need to massage each and every major joints on which weight bearing joints it is a mandatory why we need to massage because massaging will improve the micro circulation that micro circulation will increase the flexibility so that if you have good flexibility then the consistency in practicing will be there that is the reason whenever you are practicing any kind of yoga always you need to spend 5 to 10 minutes in massaging the major joints it may be the ankle joint it may be the knee joint or it may be the shoulder joint or it may be the elbow or even wrist uh, wrist joint are supposed to be massaged for 5 to 10 minutes after massaging then very importantly even you need to focus on which kind of apparels you are wearing which kind of dress you are wearing so always you need to wear very easy comfortable clothes are supposed to be uh, worn whenever you are practicing the yoga if it is tight and if they are if they are not from the cotton material cotton fabrics if they are other than cotton fabrics again they will irritate and that may distract your mind and body that may distract your practice so always even we need to give more focus on the clothes which kind of clothes we are using uh, whenever you are practicing the yoga so these are the some of the thing what you need to understand and coming to the very important part very briefly i would like to take you uh, to understand the, uh, how exactly these principles are very important first is systematic and sequential order as i stated earlier yoga shastra while uh, you all know that patanjali yoga sutra so uh, patanjali yoga sutra there are uh, eight limbs how exactly they arranged yama niyama asana pranayama pratyahara dharana dhyana samadhi so in seen in such a sequential order you need to practice even if you are practicing any kind of asana how you need to practice first you need to practice from the loosening exercise warm up exercise after warm up exercise you need to practice the standing series then sitting series then prone then supine after supine series then you need to practice the pranayama again while practicing the pranayama first cleansing pranayamas cleansing pranayamas are nothing but like kapalabhati bastrika nadi shodhana first we need to start from with the cleansing pranayama then next you need to proceed to the heating pranayama heating pranayamas are nothing but right nostril breathing surya anuloma viloma surya bedana then later next you need to uh, enter into the practice of chandra anuloma viloma chandra bedana that is left nostril breathing then later you need to end uh, end up to the practice of soothing like of pranayama like brahmari so this is the very sequential order yoga shastra says how you need to practice if the if there is any episode in this uh, sequence then obviously you are not going to get the good result one is that sequential order is supposed to be practiced pranayama is supposed to be practiced after practicing the asana asana are supposed to be practiced after practicing the yama and nima so this is the sequence what you need to uh, stick on to whenever you are practicing yoga and again systematic understanding of the body as i stated even you need to 
briefly you need to understand what is your body what is your skeletal body how exactly you are suppose if you are suffering with any uh, osteoarthritis like condition at that time you should not spend lot of time in doing the, the standing series of asanas because obviously it will hurt your knee or it will it will hurt your joints and again pain may aggravate so first you need to respect your joint and even you need to respect your joint movements because if you don't know the concept of movement of the joint movement of particular joints again you may end up in the complication for example many people in nowadays when it comes to the practicing of loosening exercise related to the knee joint most of the people knee joint they will rotate but knee joint doesn't has any rotatory uh, motion it is only flexible and extension so when there is no any rotation but if you forcibly rotating your knee joint then again there is a chance of uh, rupture of uh, ligaments so you need to always understand the movement of each and every joints when it comes to the shoulder joint shoulder joint it can be rotated it, it can be extended it can be flexed adduction every movement you can do for the shoulder so first we need to see the skeletal body how exactly it is there suppose if you are suffering with any diseases related to the vertebral column it may be disc bulge if you are a victim of disc bulge don't do the cord bending if you are suffering from the cervical spondylosis don't practice kapalabhati and bastrika so first you need to understand your anatomy you need to understand your physiology and you need to understand your even if you are suffering with any diseases you need to understand the pathophysiology in such a way systematic observation of your mind and body is needed and next very sick sequential order you need to proceed the next whenever you are practicing again i uh, yoga shastra always says that you know, like uh, you need to give uh, folk you need to focus on your body and you need to practice the yoga yoga asanas because you know that whenever you are doing any kind of yoga asana in group we, many people when they are doing yoga in group most of the time they will start interacting with each other so that should not be there so whenever you are doing any kind of asanas you need to focus your mind completely your awareness should be on each and every body part suppose if you are doing any sideward bending your awareness should be on your waist on the trunk region you need to see which part of your body is uh, pulling which car which part of your body is compressing you need to absorb because again this is not exactly shastra says so yoga shastra yoga literature says that whenever you are practicing yoga asana you need to uh, practice with complete awareness if you are doing yoga asana but your mind is in kitchen if your mind is in office then you are not going to get any kind of result so always with complete awareness you need to take body and mind together to get the appropriate result then next very important even you need to focus on the breathing because uh, yoga shastra always says that whenever you are practicing any kind of asanas or whenever you are attaining the any final posture of any kind of asana you need to focus on even breathing suppose if you are bending forward you need to breathe out you need to ventilate you need to take out the air outside then you need to bend forward then as you come up then you need to inhale and you need to become straight so ultimately for uh, while doing each and every asanas in each and every step each and every step should be synchronized with the breathing then only you are going to get the good result suppose if you are hypertensive patient and if uh, while doing the forward bending if you inhale and if you forward what happen ultimately it will increase your abdominal pressure again that increase abdominal pressure will put the pressure on the abdominal aorta which again uh, increases your blood pressure so that is the reason whenever you are doing the forward bending asanas you always you need to ventilate you need to breathe out and you need to bend in such a way in every movement you need to synchronize with the uh, breathing the next is that very importantly you need to always end particular asana with the counter pose because nowadays we don't focus much on counter poses counter poses in the sense suppose if you do the paschimottasana if you do forward bending of asana then you need to do backward bending and you need to end the particular asana suppose if you do one set of forward bending asana later you need to bend at least for few seconds backward that is counter pose if you don't do the counter pose again again there might be a chance of complications so always after practicing particular asana you need to end up with the counter pose then another very important part is dispersion dispersion is nothing but just relaxing your body after practicing particular asana you need to pause your practice for 5 to 10 seconds when you uh, pause your practice then that will helps to conserve the energy which is lost during the practice of particular asana conserve the energy and to focus on each and every body parts you need to give 5 to 10 seconds of pause after practicing of every asanas 
and the counterpose of asanas in such a way these are the very important thumb rules which are supposed to be uh, avoided while practicing the uh, which are supposed to be stick on to the while practicing the regular asana or yoga kriya so just these are the some of the examples of counter poses suppose if you are doing the paschimottasana you need to end up with the chakrasana if you are doing the halasana then you need to practice the uh, setu bandhasana so if you are practicing the shirsasana then you need to after shirsasana you need to practice the tadasana or namaskarasana in such a way asanas are supposed to be practiced with the counter poses so again some myths are there when it comes to the practicing of yoga that is very basic myths like practicing advanced series of asana is yoga no it is not mandatory that if you are able to practice the advanced series then only you are called as a yogi or then only you are called as that you are practicing the yoga no even without doing advanced series basic asanas with complete awareness if you do complete focusing on your breathing if you do even that will also give the miracle result to your body so practicing advanced series of asana is only considered as yoga is absolutely myth it's a wrong statement age matters for yoga practice no there is no any limitation for age because in ayurveda in yoga shastra it has been stated that yuva uh, yuva vruddha ati vruddha vyadita durbala so these are the five conditions where each and every person can uh, where the person can practice the yoga yuva yuth vruddha even in uh, old age and even abala that is the person who is having less strength that is in childhood even a person can practice if the person is victim of diseases durbala if the person is having less strength even he can practice if the person is vyadita if the person is suffering with any kind of diseases even he can practice the yoga so there is no any age limit everyone can practice uh, yoga everyone can practice yoga by just reading books seeing tv or yoga yoga cities this is literally a wrong, a wrong statement no you can't practice just by seeing you need to take the direction from the appropriate practitioner who is having the knowledge about the anatomy physiology who is having the appropriate knowledge about mind and body if you take guidance from that person then you will be a best yoga practitioner and yoga is generalized for everyone and every disease complaints no you can't generalize yoga because nowadays many people are practicing routine yoga but it if the person are healthy then that can be generalized but most of the time incorporate the concepts of ayurveda shastra like ayurveda says about prakruti there are seven types of prakruti that is a body bodily constitution it may be vata ja pitta ja kapha ja dvandva ja so in such a way there are numerous constitution of the body on the basis of prakruti if you see again each and every prakruti are different each and every prakruti of each and every individual are different when it is a different obviously yoga module are also supposed to be changed according to the need of the person there, there won't be any module which suits the each and every person always it depends upon the age of the person it depends upon the in which place the person is staying what are the circumstances he is facing everything you need to assess and you need to make a appropriate module to the appropriate person so it's not an otc medicine that is you can go and you can just uh, like uh, get it from the any med, uh, pharmacy it is not a otc medicine you need to always consider the appropriate yoga practitioner who is having the knowledge about the medicine and consult appropriate expert whenever you are practicing yoga whenever you are if you are a practitioner and if you are uh, like suppose if you are a first time practitioner if you are a health seeker then you are supposed to reveal all all your medical history you are not supposed to hide any any sort of complaints because again that may affect your body and mind adversely so no thumb rule for yoga practice as i stated it will vary from person to person and circumstance to circumstance prepare your body mentally and physically to overcome the adverse effect of practice so whenever you are practicing any kind of yoga asana you need to prepare yourself you need to prepare your mind and body after preparing only you need to practice the yoga asana and food sleep and recreation and yoga together will give the uh, advantage because we know that many people they think that if you are practicing yoga you can like uh, even though if you lead a wrong lifestyle it is going to it is not going to give any adverse effect no because uh, how exactly bhagavad gita says that yukta ahara viharasya yukta cheshtasya karmasu yukta swapna bodhasya yogo bhavatu dukkha that is if you want to remain healthy just practicing yoga asana pranayama is not sufficient along with that you need to have a appropriate good sleep you need to stick on to the healthy food habits you need to even spend some time for some recreational activities some uh, with all these together when you proceed in practicing of yoga then only that particular yoga is going to give uh, advantage to your mind and body so this is my final uh, submission
Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for elaborate explanation. Yoga is very important for each and every one of us. At the same time, yoga without an instructor, yoga without a proper guru may be highly damaging and toxic. This is the first you. time I'm hearing about uh, contraindications in yoga because I was always exposed to only the benefits. And based on what you said, yoga practice has to be personalized just like they do for Ayurveda. It's not a one size fit all and it has to be prescribed by a yoga expert. But are there such yoga experts in India who provide this individualized or personalized uh, yoga uh, programs? And if so, where can I find such people, such yoga doctors? As I, as I am from National Institute of Ayurveda. So in Ayurveda, if the Ayurveda Acharyas who is good in practicing yoga, so each and every Ayurveda teacher who is good in practicing yoga, he will be the best uh, instructor for yoga practice. The question I have is, uh, does Kapalabhati increase metastasis in cancer patients? Uh, see, uh, actually metastatic condition, as we all know that there, there is it uh, like uh, there is there, in simple way in layman language, if I want to say, obviously the cell started migrating from one place to from the site of origin to the other. It, it will start uh, uh, like approaching the uh, new organs at that time kapalabhati again kapalabhati is something that which increases your metabolism if you practice the uh, what we call like uh, practice kapalabhati in limited way that may affect you because excessive practice that may worsen that may worsen the conditions like uh, this metastasis but here if the person is doing Kapalabhati appropriately, because Ayurveda Shastra says that Rogaha Sarve Api Mandagna, every diseases is because of Mandagni. So if you want to kindle your digestion and metabolism, so you can practice Kapalabhati and Bastrika. So the appropriate in limited way, in moderate way, if you practice Kapalabhati, that will help to maintain your proper metabolism. If your metabolism is proper, that metabolism helps to overcome the disease because Ayurveda says that, especially Agni, like uh, Ayur Varana Balam Swastya. Utsah Upache Prabha Ojo Stejo Agnaya Pranas Chagni Hetuka. That is Agni, that is digestion power itself is considered as the immunity. So, immunity and strength of the body mainly depends upon the Agni. So, if you want to maintain your metabolism and digestion, you need to practice Kapalabhati. So, if you moderate way, if you practice uh, Kapalabhati, it will maintain your Agni, which is which improve your immunity. That immunity may prevent the spreading of the cells, that is, it may prevent the uh, metastasis like condition. Suppose if you excessively uh, practice Kapalabhati, then that may worsen the condition. So moderate way of practicing Kapalabhati is absolute. Again, which uh, what should be quantity, it depends upon the status of the metabolism, status of the digestion power. If the person is having very poor digestion, then he can take up to practicing the uh, Kapalabhati up to the moderate level. If he is having already moderate level, then again, very low level Kapalabhati practice is sufficient. If he is having appropriate good digestion and metabolism, then at that time need, there is no need to practice the Kapalabhati rather than you advise certain pranayamas which will minimize the spread of the disease. Preferably, because we all know that in every disease, there is the involvement of the stress. To combat the stress, because even stress will worsen the conditions like metastasis. Here, to combat the stress, you need to practice the uh, pranayamas, preferably like left nostril breathing, what we call chandra anuloma viloma, chandra bedana, uh, sadanta shitali, shitali, shitakari, then followed by the brahmari. So these will uh, calm down your mind and it will take out the stress, which will help in controlling the conditions like metastasis. I think there is one more question related to that. In systemic approach to yoga, you mentioned that we have to first activate your body. How exactly should you do that? I was told that to start running you have to do stretches to do strength training again we are told to do yoga stretches but you also said that how to prepare to do yoga what are these preparations see as i stated so there is a beautiful verse in maha upanishad they says that laye sambodeti chittam vikshiptam samayati punaha sa kashayam vijaniya so what exactly they want to say is that like laye sambodeti chittam if you are in the state of lethargy if you are in the state of state of inertia then you need to activate laye sambodeti chittam vikshiptam samayati puna suppose if your body and mind are highly activated then you need to calm down so when you activate and calm down together will helps to control your mind so here whenever we are practicing any kind of asana suppose after your 
night sleep as soon as you get up obviously your body will be in the your mind and body will be in the state of lethargy a state of uh, what we inertia at that time you need to do activity you need to activate your body by doing all this stretching or running or even warm up exercise even surya namaskara suppose if you are practicing yoga asana in the evening at that time because of the nature your mind by mind and body are already activated at that time just moderate amount of loosening exercise followed by all these uh, like uh, pranayama you can do so again it depends upon the status of your mind and body if you are highly activated then no need to go for any act again uh, reactivating the things because in evening most of the body will be activated throughout the day one or uh, uh, one or other activity we will be doing or mind and body are already activated at that time again we, there is no need to excessively activate it so this is the words what we get from the uh, maha upanishad and even practically it is supposed to be done like this. and even in ayurveda shastra suppose if you are from ayurveda there is a beautiful verse while uh, grahini chikitsa what uh, charakachare says that like diva pravurdha arkena hrudayam pundarika so what they want to say is that in day time all the metabolism all the circulation all the uh, like activeness of the body will be more because of the arka because of sunlight itself your body is activated so when your body is already activated by the nature and even vyayamascha uh, vikshipta chetasa even by physical activity and your elevated mood so these are the some of the camp components which will activate your body or which will keep your body activated throughout the day so if your body is already activated if you are practicing in the evening again there is no need to go for extra activation uh, jo marin ji suggest would like to add the suggestion in preparation to yoga practice after good sleep bowel cleansing and uh, drinking warm water is to add abhyanga for all mature people uh, thank you for a wonderful and complete class uh, namaste so and especially uh, when it comes to the good sleep ayurveda literature has beautiful words even because when we focus on sleeping especially ayurveda says that sayam buktam lagu hite samay manas puchi so if you want to get a good sleep there are many factors you need to focus sayam buktam you need to have meal in the sayankala that is in the early evening food between uh, 7 to 8 sayam bukta in the evening you need to have the food sayam buktam lagu hite the quality of the food what you are going to have that should be easy digestible and there should and it should be hita it should not be like uh, activating your nowadays people have the habit of eating these uh, pizza burger all the spices at the evening that should not be done uh, to get the good sleep and sayam buktam lagu hite and even you are you need to be free from all sort of your psychological activities but nowadays even we will carry our office to uh, our home even we will do lots of office work pending office work in the house that should not be done even we are making nowadays kids to learn or we we make the kids to do their homework at the late night in the after the food that's uh, that kind of activities are not supposed to be done i mean ayurveda also says that even which kind of beddings you are using even you need to focus to get the good sleep ayurveda says that vasarante pibet paya even you need to drink milk uh, after having the dinner to get the good sleep pada bhenga shirashravana padeshu visheshena shele even ayurveda says that you need to go for massaging your foot uh, before going to bed Uh, foot massage also induces the good sleep even ayurveda says that nasal installation what we call pratimarshanasya dinante pratimarshanasya nidra sukha prabodhanam sukha prabodhanam so nidra uh, proper to get the good sleep even you need to go for uh, nasal installation in the evening so lots of uh, tips has given in, uh, in ayurveda literature if you incorporate then obviously you can get a good sound sleep that will helps to, uh, to like practice the yoga next day appropriately you said that uh, when doing pranayama one first must do cleansing and then warming pranayama what if a person has health issues associated with pitta dosha wouldn't cleansing and warming pranayama be contraindicated that's the question sir yeah that's a, that's a good question because uh, as i stated you need to incorporate incorporate the concept of prakruti if the person belongs to the pittaja prakruti and if the person is suffering from any kind of pittaja vyadhis it may be the amla pitta or even it may be the vata rakta like that or pitta uh, pittaja vyadhis at that time obviously heating pranayamas like what we call surya anuloma viloma surya vedana are not supposed to be advised and even kapalabhati bastrika which are considered as the cleansing pranayama are not supposed to be advised for them in cleansing pranayama nadi shodhana what we call right uh, alternative nostril breathing can be advised in cleansing pranayama there are three types of pranayama one is nadi shodhana what we call anuloma viloma 
नेक्स्ट इज कपाल भाती एंड बस्त्री का तो फॉर पित्तज प्रकृति और पित्तज वैदि यू नीड टू ओमिट दिस कपाल भाती एंड बस्त्री का प्रैक्टिस जस्ट एडवाइज दी नाडी शोधना फॉलोड बाई दी लेफ्ट नॉस्ट्रल ब्रीथिंग सूर्य चंद्र अनुलोम विलोम चंद्र भेदना सदंत शीतल दिस कैंड ऑफ प्राणायाम यू कैन एडवाइज इज इन सूर्य नमस्कार ए ग्रूप ऑफ योग आसना सो सूर्य नमस्कार कैन बी डन प्रयर टू डूइंग योग आसना ऑब्वियसली एज ए स्टेट लाइक सूर्य नमस्कार इट इज ए सेट ऑफ आसना आई न्यूवर सेट बींग ए सेट ऑफ आसना so you can practice it before doing any kind of asana and even you can take it as a like warm up exercise you can practice you can practice no issues so thanking uh, kashinath sir a goodbye big thank you and plenty of love from easy ayurveda namaste